Hello friends, welcome back to my studio. I hope you're well. I have bought myself some early Christmas presents. I've got some lovely paints here to show you today and a few other things. So let's turn the camera around and have a look at them. The first thing I want to talk to you about is this Moleskine visual diaries that I bought and I really like soft cover visual diaries and so I bought these ones which I use to kind of show you and demonstrate things and the pages they're all stuck together because I've been painting um, the pages are very very thin um, they've been taking the media okay because I started painting in them but I think they're really made more, this version of the Moleskine are more made for journaling and writing rather than painting. And I was watching Sandy Hester and if any one of you don't know her, please look her up. I will leave a link in the description. She is just such fun and an amazing artist. And I've done a couple of her courses as well. She's well worth looking up. And she's been, in her latest vlog, she has been making her own visual diaries. And she's been coating the pages with a mix that she's made up. And so I decided to give it a go. And this is the, the mix made up here. It's gone a little bit thick because it's been sitting. But basically it has got matte medium, a paint, and she used this antique white in the Matisse, I think because she tried it and she didn't like Matisse paint <laughs> at all, which was interesting. Um, she tends to paint very flat and she said this was too plastic for her. Um, but anyway, the antique white and then just some water. And she was pretty vague about her consistency uh, or about the amount of each thing but I've managed to mix up and I've coated these pages in it. And so I thought I'd do the swatching today on this and see how it goes. And so far it's looking, it's given a little bit more thickness and a little bit of chalkiness to the page. So I've gone ahead and painted a whole lot of pages in my other visual diaries as well. And I think it'll be something that I use going forward, which is why I'm mentioning it. So what paints have I bought? I bought, these are colours I already have, and so it's just a restock. And I've decided to start moving into more of the flow paint rather than the structure paint. And the difference really is in the Matisse. And I'll show you here. So this is the same colour, the Australian Blue Gum. And the structure paint is what you would call a heavy body paint. And this is a soft body paint. It's, it says flow. It's certainly not a, um, it's not like the high flow paints that you can get. It's kind of like a happy medium between, between the two. This Midnight Blue, I did actually accidentally buy it in the flow originally and I've really enjoyed it so as I replace all of my colors I'll be replacing them with the flow because I don't really like a lot of texture in my painting so I don't need that really heavy body structure paint. The other colors that I got are in this golden range I've wanted these for so so long and my local supplies have been out of stock and I couldn't find it on online anywhere, but I finally found them. So I jumped at the chance to get them. This one in particular, and we'll swatch it up. Now we'll just bring it a bit closer. So this is Titan Mars Pale. And it's a lovely soft colour. It's made up of titanium white. It's got a lot of white in it. 
So the Titan refers to the titanium white and the Mars refers to the Mars brown that is in there. And the Mars brown, I'll show you on the screen now, is made up of these three colours here. And it looks like it would be like this skin tone. But when you get it out of the tube, you see, even though this is skin tone light, it's a very dark. It's got a lot more of the red ochre in it. And when you add white, you'd think, okay, well, I'll lighten this up to get, get this. Just a sec, I'll get some water going, which is what I've done here, the skin tone with titanium. And it goes really pink. It loses. This has got a bit of yellow in it, which helps keep it earthy. So, yeah, it's, a, it's really amazing that you think that just looks like it's got a bit of titanium white to soften it off. But, yeah, it goes, goes much more pink, which is an absolutely lovely pink, and I've really enjoyed using that. But I just couldn't get this colour at all. The other thing I tried when I googled how, if you can't source this, how to come up with it, and it mentioned this Venetian red, which is why I've started using the Venetian red. It's a really, and I showed it a bit, this is in my Georgia O'Keeffe colour palette that I'd been creating, and it's a lovely earth tone, really lovely and rich. It's called Venetian Red because it was used a lot by Venetian artists, particularly Titian. And there's a pit of where they mine the clay from, or the mineral, in just outside of Venice that's claiming to be where Titian got his Venetian Red from. Today it's really made very synthetically because... When they're pulling it out of the ground, there's so much variant. And because we need, as artists, we need that consistency. It's uh, a synthetic colour, made synthetically now. But it makes up, when I've been adding it, again, trying to lighten it to get to this Titan Mars, I've been putting titanium white with it. And again, coming up with, you know, it's incredible that this red would go so pink. So with varying degrees of more and more white added. This is what I've been putting in my landscapes. And it's a really lovely earthy pink compared to what the skin tone does. Again, that looked really pink and now this is here. Whoops. Couldn't see. Now this is here. Let me zoom. So yeah, again, really different types of pinks in there and still not this. This has still got more yellow and a bit of black. So when I was then trying to add yellow and black to these, it, it, I just wasn't achieving this. So there you go. I've completely justified why I've needed to <laughs> purchase the Titan Mars Pale and I'll be painting with that later today to show you. The other colour is Titan Violet Pale, as it suggests, is pale, but more on the purple violet side. Lovely, delicate colour. And the other, because the other colours I've been putting in that I talked a lot about last week, is the permanent violet or the dioxazine purple with the titanium white to really pale it down or to tint when you're adding white it's a tint and so that's how light I've been doing it but this is just paler again and just a beautiful beautiful color I don't know, I'm really moving into these paler, softer, wanting to really soften my work. Yeah, these colours, 
they're still really earthy they're going to be lovely with landscapes and but yeah i just love how pale these the this particularly is and that paint has received been received by this page with this mix of sandy hesters really really well so that's a very exciting so thank you so much sandy for that tip australian blue gum of course is something you've heard me talk about before as well so that's it and then of course I add it with the unbleached titanium and it gives me and I'll just show you a swatch of it these tins that I bought they're a lovely glass jar with a metal lid but I'm noticing the metal lid is really sticking and hard to get off compared to the plastic tubs so I think I'll be staying with the plastic tubs as much as I don't like to buy plastics so this is how it looks with the titanium wire uh, sorry the unbleached titanium added as if you watch me regularly you'll know that that's uh, really mutes it down and yeah really love it like that wouldn't necessarily use it straight out of the tube and that's what's nice about buying these more complex colors is that they've got a whole lot of different pigment in them so you can start to use them straight out of the tube whereas this yeah i definitely want to want to have it muted down like that okay the other exciting thing i bought that i've wanted for a long long time to try is this interference blue fine it's a metallic color put a drop on there so you won't really you can see perhaps on the brush that shine that it gives if i can pick there we go so yeah it looks like nothing at all there but it just picks up that metallic and then what you can do is add it and i used this a couple of logs ago this soft gel mat on the golden youtube channel they talk about having a faux encaustic look and so adding and i've wanted to play around with that because i really love encaustics and i'd love to use them but they need to be on a hard surface because of course once the wax is set it's a solid thing and i tend to paint on canvas more than panels and so having this it stays flexible so it gives you a wax an encaustic wax look but stays flexible so it can go onto canvas and i've done a little swatch got a little sample here this here is just the soft gel mat just painted you can see the line there so this is the raw acrylic paint this has got the soft gel mat over it and then this section here has the soft gel mat with a bit of the interference blue in there so you see how it's whoops see how it's got a wax look so i'm going to have a play today and just do a very quick sketch of a landscape and put this soft gel faux encaustic look over the top and see what i get
So with the ability of being able to say, here's one I prepared earlier, here is it now dry. So that's got the 
soft gel mat and it has to be matte. You can use the regular or the heavy gel mat, but it needs to be gel matte and the interference blue. You can also put a little bit of gold so it gives that more beeswax honey uh, colour to it. But here it is. Yeah, I just really like that encaustic look. So <clears throat> I'm not <laughs> suggesting that this is a great painting. I did just throw it together. But um, yeah, I wanted to see what it, what it looked like. And it was nice to paint on this linen stuff without a care and, and just go for it and stop being precious about these little ones. Because it is on canvas, yes, it's definitely, if I did that on the uh, encaustic, and I'll just show you an encaustic piece. This is an encaustic painting of mine, and I was playing around trying to crack the surface and give this crackle effect, and I've managed to actually smash the wax off the panel. But anyway, that's what the encaustic wax with colour in it can look like compared to... So yeah, I think it's, it's pretty comparable. The next thing would be what I'd like to test is adding colour into these and painting with this rather than coating over the top and seeing what that, that might give me. But I need an extra day in the week to do all these ideas and things that I come up with. As always, I hope that inspires you to go ahead and have a play if an encaustic look is something that you like. That's a, another way to achieve it without going full on into learning how to make encaustic paint. I did also want to mention Thanksgiving is not something that we celebrate here in Australia and I think these Black Friday sales are connect, quite connected to Thanksgiving is my understanding. And Australia has certainly embraced Black Friday sales, which seem to be not just one day, but for several weeks. So I just wanted to mention on my Redbubble account, they are doing a Black Friday sale on all items across the site. And I'm just showing you here what's available through my Redbubble account. So if you have ever wanted to own some of my work and perhaps a bigger piece is not something you can fit in your home or can afford, this is a great opportunity to buy a piece of my work either on something functional like a phone case or a mug or, or home furnishings like cushions, covers. You can also get canvas prints and prints on paper framed prints so you can buy it more as an artwork rather than a functional piece but uh, the functional pieces are really fun and I ended up ordering this design on these coasters and I've ordered a few things I've showed before some prints that I've ordered as well that I had for a exhibition that we did in town and the quality is absolutely i'm very very impressed the quality is great i've ordered printed things before from other companies and redbubble really have sourced great printers and they're they're really good uh, good products really great qualities so i just thought i'd mention that in case that was something that you you wanted to know that it is all on sale at the moment and you can just scan this QR code. It is linked in the description, but if it's easier, just scan this code and it will take you straight to the site. That's all I have for you this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely week and I'll see you next week. Bye.